The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome into Views from the Sideline. I'm Joey Tysick, across from me, Malik Hill, and we are back from a little short hiatus. And um, there's a ton to talk about. The Tigers played some playoff baseball. Unfortunately, they are no longer playing playoff baseball. I saw baseball. it, Joey. I was there. <laughs> you got to see it in person. I was person. actually there. Uh, we have some, some little updates on Michigan and Michigan State football. Nothing too exciting there. Spoiler alert. And... Uh, we got to talk about where we're at with picks because it's exciting. Um, the Lions had a big win, and they have a big game upcoming, but there is some turmoil on the team. So to start it off, Tigers game, they beat down on the Houston Astros, which was fun to watch, good series, and they got to knock them out. A.J. Hinch, former GM of uh, or skipper of the – Astros, now for the Tigers, got to beat his former team. Tigers get to beat Justin Verlander. Kind of some fun little storylines there. And then they get into a five-game series with the Guardians. Goes all the way. Malik, how was your experience getting to watch Game 3? It was electric. It was was worth the money. My seat was behind home plate, kind of like near the top, but it it was still a good seat. Mm-hmm. I could get. I had a view of everything. It, it it's hard to put into words. Like everybody waving those orange towels, seeing them play good baseball, seeing Spencer Torkelson somewhat come out of his slump because mm-hmm. he had two hits the game after. Yeah, it it was a great experience. At playoff baseball, ten out of ten. Yeah. It, I loved it, every minute of it. I'd go back again. I will go back again when they make the playoffs next time. And I think the whole series was fun because it was just there was a lot of back and forth. Now game five was a little bit upsetting. It was it, it was a heartbreaker in retrospect because yeah, you lose by one at home mm-hmm. and yeah, and they Tom. had did Lane Thomas hit a home run in that game? That was the grand slam. He hit one in that game and he hit a game. He hit one in the closing out game too. Yeah, so, so I, yeah. Yeah, I don't in, know what it was. In game five, it was Scooble pitching, and the announcers totally made a jinx. They said, Lane Thomas, notorious first swing kind of guy. He's looking for a fastball. And Scooble, after giving up some runs, yeah. looking a little he looked, shaky. Scooble looked human yeah. for the first time in a while. So bases were loaded. He wanted to just send one right down, and uh, Thomas got a hold of it. And that was basically the end of the series. Yeah. They tried to battle back. They clawed back a little bit. Um, but it was just too much. That The Tigers really aren't built for that kind of comeback in a game. They're more, they kind of do it the old school way. Don't have a lot yeah. of pitchers. Don't have a lot of big bats. Pitching and timely hits. Yeah, they do a lot of uh, matchup-based um, pitching and even batting at times. Yeah. So they have to manufacture runs that way. And they did pretty good overall. Um, it was fun to see. Love that they went against Cleveland, five games. It stinks that they got out, but we were expecting them to have been out a long time ago. So we'll take it for what it is, and hopefully they can improve on next year. I'm a little nervous they're going to come back down to earth a bit. Yeah, the fans e- expect them to spend money because they can, and they should just not rest on their laurels. That, yeah. that was a magical run. It doesn't happen every now and then. It doesn't seem like... Chris Harris is the kind of guy that's going to spend money. So I'm a little bit nervous about it. Um, but we'll see. Maybe, you know, this run did change some things. Yeah, they they got me watching baseball again for the first time in over a decade. Yeah. So I – shouts out to the Tigers for bringing some of that love back. And <laughs> I I plan on watching them to start next season. There I will not be a Fairweather fan. I will be in for what they are going into next season. Yeah. 
I uh, most likely will be a Fairweather fan once again. <laughs> Um, but I may pay jump little, in, jump may, back in. I may pay a little bit more attention, um, depending on where their their uh, live coverage rights go to. Because right now, I think they're still up in the air, as far as I know. So, Valley Sports, thank well, goodness. Well, uh, I found I found a place to watch some games, so I could okay tell you about that one. Okay, off air. Okay, <laughs> yeah, we can do that. Um, so yeah, Tiger season is over, but uh, they gave us a little bit of excitement back in Detroit. So now the Pistons are the worst team again. But we'll talk about them next week. We'll talk about week. them soon. Look decent in the preseason, but we'll get that get to that later. Yeah, hopefully we can have Chris on next week. And then um, if not, maybe we'll do an episode like two weeks from now. We're doing the full NBA we'll preview. See. I, I, I kind of didn't realize that. Well, that's what I yeah. want to do. But if Chris is not available, then we'll, we'll maybe flip things around. But I thought it would be fun. So... College football has still been going on. I haven't paid a whole lot of attention to it. I kind of forgot that Michigan and Michigan State were both on bye last week. Um, but I have been starting to pay attention to Ashton Genty. Listen, man. He's pretty good. There, <laughs> I, I'm I'm very annoyed with college football. For, well, kind of people that aren't really college football fans are mad about Ashton Genty. Yeah. Because Wait, because why? they're saying he's not playing good competition. Oh, because he plays for Boise State. Yeah, he plays at Boise State, so it doesn't mean much. This is the old classic which is a, a, a argument I hate with a passion. This was like every time it comes around. Back with the Kellen Moore team when Listen. they were they were no good because they played down and they're not good enough to compete with the top dogs. Listen, man, T he, he is on track to have the the best season since Barry Sanders in 1986 or seven, mm. whichever season. Like this doesn't happen often. Yeah. And people are trying to pick it apart for some reason, right? I, I I don't I don't get it. It makes no sense. He's he's incredible to watch. Yeah, and and it's not like, and Boise State nowadays plays better competition than they did back before when they first started. Listen, coming they played up in Oregon football, yeah. and I saw somebody said, "Well, Oregon wasn't the same team when they played." Shut up! Yeah, <laughs> shut like, up! Stop it! Was that game a touchdown difference? They it was like 35, 37, 34. Yeah, they lost by closer. three, and it he dominated. He almost single handedly beat Oregon. Yeah, he he's incredible. Yeah, just wait till he gets in the NFL. Yeah. He has almost thirteen hundred yards and eighteen touchdowns through six weeks. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And even better, nine hundred forty one yards after contact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> what that that doesn't even against lower competition. Who does that? Yeah, it, it's insane. He'll be fun in the NFL. That's for sure. I think. I don't know who's going to draft him, but... I've seen so many people saying the Cowboys will draft him in the middle of the first. He's going to go first round. Yeah. He probably won't go top 10, but... Yeah. yeah. Some, somebody in that 10 to 20 range is going to snatch him up. Right. So, anyway, Michigan Michigan State coming off of their buys. Should I give just a few notes before we get to them? Sure. Because the, to. I, I don't want to do some huge recap. Yeah, go for Army it. Army and Navy are both ranked, Joey. Yeah. For the first time since... You want to know how long? Um, not 20 years. It's been a while, right? What year were you born? 1992. Way before that. <laughs> not the 70s, not the 60s, not even the 50s, Joey. Oh, boy. I believe 1947 was the last time Army and Navy were both undefeated and ranked through the halfway point of the season. That's crazy. Are you ready for Army-Navy playoff implications? That <laughs> is honestly actually pretty fun. I uh, Yes. And what are we talking about? Boise State is ranked 15th. And it's all Ashton Get these people out of here. Well, listen, Army yeah. Navy could play twice for the first time in I don't know how long. Yeah. They could play be, in the American Championship and then again. That would be a lot of fun. Absolutely incredible. And uh, just looking at the schedule, like Navy has Notre Dame coming up in two weeks. It'll, it'll be a really fun game. Yeah. So that'll be cool. Who does, does Army play anybody big? They um, also play Notre Dame yeah. in three weeks yeah. or four weeks. And listen, Notre Dame has shown they can come up short at home. Yeah. So. I'm I'm watching both games, especially the Army game. How weird is it to see Michigan smack dab in between Army, Army and Navy? Navy. <laughs> this is what I love about college football. Every like six, seven years, something like this happens. Yeah, where certain programs just emerge and have great seasons, and I love it. Other teams that are doing it, Illinois, SMU, and Pitt, also in the between the twenty and twenty-two range, mm -hmm. having really good seasons. Yeah, Ole Miss has fallen off. Indiana's ranked six, 16th. Six, no. They haven't played a great schedule, but they're playing great football. Mm -hmm. Shouts out to Indiana. Uh, BYU is 6-0. Oh. 
nobody even expected them to be close to like having a chance to win the conference. Yeah. And they have a great defense and they're playing good offense. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're just much better than anybody expected. Clemson got back on track. K Klubnik is better than I expected. Shout out to him. Iowa State is ranked ninth. They're also they're undefeated. Yeah, they're undefeated. Um, and then you have most of the usual suspects in the rest of the top ten. Alabama lost to Vandy. That happened. I watched. I did watch yeah. that game. Diego Pavia is becoming a legend. They Vandy all, is four and two and two and zero oh in the SEC. And then they almost lost to South Carolina. Yeah. The following week. Um, last week, uh, Penn State beat USC at USC. Mm-hmm. One of James Franklin's best. James Franklin's best wins of his career. Uh, Oregon had one of the best wins of their program history, beating Ohio State at home. Yep. They're up to number two. After everybody thought, you know, preseason, Oregon, everybody was like, oh, a lot of hype around them. And then they started their season off kind of slow. They've had a lot of close games, but they're still 6-0. Yeah, they right they there. saved their best for their biggest game of the season. Mm-hmm. And I'm terrified of what they'll do to Michigan in a few weeks. But we're not there yet. And Texas is holding at number one. Yeah. They haven't played a competent offense yet, but <laughs> they're handling their business. Right. Arch Manning came in and got the job done for two weeks. And they do have Georgia this week, so. Yeah. Quinn Ewers came back and played a beat-down Oklahoma team. He was shaky coming back, but they still blew him out. And Georgia really isn't that explosive on offense either, but they're still a really good team. So, yeah, Texas-Georgia, huge game coming up this Saturday. Can't mm-hmm. wait to watch. Now to the Michigan teams. Do you want to start or um, who does MSU have coming up? I don't need. Who I, are they playing this? Week? I'll be honest. I've kind of lost track. <laughs> Michigan State had a lot of um, big opponents the last couple yeah. weeks before they're, their bye. They're getting into this crazy stretch. Uh, I'm pretty sure they have the Iowa game. Yeah, okay. yeah, because it's after the stretch. They have Iowa. Is it at home? Uh, yes, I so, believe it is. So it's in East Lansing. This is a pretty big game. This was yeah. the big game for them. This um, is the start. They actually, I know, okay, so Ohio State, they lost 7-38. to 38. They lost to Oregon 10-31. to 31, Yeah. But they didn't look that bad. They didn't look horrible. They kind of did what I hoped they would do. First quarter, they looked competent, and then the games just kind of ran away from them. That's all I wanted from those games. I didn't expect anything big. Yeah. Um, so now with this Iowa game, this is the game that I needed them to win. They need to get that. That bowl game, I feel like if they get the bowl game, successful season. Here's the thing, though. Iowa's coming off by far Mm -hmm. their best offensive performance against a Big Ten team Yeah, in probably like four years. Right. Do you think that was an anomaly, though? Like 40 points on Washington? It could be. (laughs) It could be. It was Washington's first big, like, real road game in the Big Ten. Well, they they went to Rutgers. But when you go to Iowa, it's tough for everybody. Mm Mm-hmm. And Iowa just put it on them. Yeah. Um, Cade McNamara completed a few touchdown passes, didn't have a big game, but com- completed a few passes like over 30 yards, which is rare for them. Yeah. Caleb Johnson is having a huge season. And, yeah, they, they just they, – it was a regular Iowa game against a team that comes into Iowa. The other problem, so. though, that I'm having, or and more so the need that I want Iowa to, to lose and get Michigan State to win in this game, they have Michigan next week. Yeah. They have to go to Michigan. That's going to be tough. Yeah, it's, it's a look-ahead game. Now, we'll talk about Michigan because they, they're they looking spotty for sure. Yeah. So, I'm not saying that that's, a, like, an easy loss for Michigan State. But the original end of their schedule that we thought was going to be a cakewalk, Indiana 6-0. and Like we said, they haven't played too many people, so we don't fully know. Illinois 5-1. and But they are 6-0. and Illinois 5-0. and They're 5-1. and yeah. Purdue... One and five. Okay. Purdue's one and five, but yeah, they just came to life. With, they just came to life with a backup last week, so who knows how that will go? Yeah. And then Rutgers is four and two, and it's it's Rutgers. Luckily, yeah. that's at home, so you know you, that that's okay. Getting but to six to, is still going to be tough. Having to go to Illinois, like, mm, yeah, makes you feel not so good anymore. Um, you know, maybe the Indiana Indiana two game, home games helps. That helps yeah, a lot. and the Indiana game being at home is probably helpful as well. But that's why I still think that this Iowa game is is pretty big for them. Yeah. So I'm hoping that you know they can use what they learned in Ohio State and Oregon games to take into their bye week, get ready for Iowa, and hopefully, hopefully do something because 
I definitely seen them dial Aiden back a little bit in those two big games. Yeah. Um, he didn't throw the ball away as much, which is good. So if he can do that, but still be able to make some of the big plays, then that should be helpful. I believe everybody is back now too. So Nick Marsh was out for yeah, a little bit. Nick Marsh bit. had a big catch against o Oregon. Yeah. One of their few deep shots of that game. Right. So if those guys are all healthy, we have, you know, Nick Marsh, Montori Foster, Velling, um, and then Jerron Glover. Like, I like their receiving core. Yeah. It seems like K Ron Lynch Adams is kind of becoming more of the guy. Um, and I think their offense is looking pretty good. And for the most part, you know, the defense is okay, but you don't have to worry about Iowa's offense too much. Now, again, we mentioned they, they had a good offensive game last week, but yeah. I, to me, I think it's they've more had, of an they've anomaly. had like two and a half good offensive games yeah. this season, which is better than like the past two or three years. Right. So I think this should be a winnable game, but again, it's just, it, it all falls on Aiden, I think. He's got to play well. Yeah, he's got to make the big play, but he's got to be he's got to be careful still. Yeah, he he's the X factor not only because he's the quarterback, but this Iowa defense has been the most consistent thing, mm -hmm. maybe in the Big Ten. Yeah, in the past like decade. Yeah, for years. I, Iowa's defense it will always be very good, sometimes elite, but usually very good. Yeah, and it's another season of them being very good. They're secondary is quality their front seven is good mm -hmm. nothing special but if you try to beat them in the passing game they're gonna pick get you a few times right they're gonna bait you in their coverages they're gonna disguise a db or do something to make you believe somebody's open and they're gonna get you mm -hmm. at least once yeah and aiden has shown he can be gotten yeah it can happen so yeah, how does he respond against a very good, consistent, disciplined Iowa defense? Yeah. That isn't falling for anything out of the ordinary. Right. And you know Iowa's going to try to slow it down. They yeah. got Kate as their quarterback who, you know, he's a, he's a veteran now. He's got experience in that stadium. Right. It's been a few years. And then Caleb Johnson has been running the ball well, so, like, I'm sure it's going to be a slowed down game. So Michigan yeah. State's kind of got to be ready for that kind of thing. Iowa likes to just shake up the tempo of games. Yeah, do not be surprised if this is like 16-13 <laughs> yeah. at the end of the game. Something Which, ugly. I mean, that falls into what Michigan State kind of wants to do a little bit too. They would like to run the ball. And I think the advantage that Michigan State always ends up happening in these type of games is that they do still have that big playability. So even if you slow it down, you have that opportunity to hit Nick Marsh for a big touchdown something like that to break the game open a little bit. It's also possible MSU could win something like 24 to 10. Like yeah. He hits a few big shots. Iowa can't get it going once again in the passing game. And they just like cruise for the right. second half or yeah. something. Yeah. And again, this would be a, a big win going into Michigan the following week. Yeah. So, and like we always say, you never know what goes into in for a rivalry game. And um, that would create, you know, if, if State wins this week, they have a chance to win against Michigan, then they're already looking at a bowl game. They just need one more win. So I'm not saying that it's super likely that they're going to win both these games, but if they beat Iowa, that could put them on a good track to end the season. My thoughts. You have anything about now, Michigan State, or you want to just go right into Michigan? I, I, pretty, I got all my thoughts on Michigan okay. pretty much. Now on to these, <laughs> these little <laughs> – These guys, man. The, Michigan is four and two and ranked twenty fourth. The Yellow Cats. They can't be called Wolverines at the moment. They I, don't have the bite. I, I've been frustrated. <laughs> I've been disappointed. This team has been all right in first halves and bad in second halves, mm -hmm. which shows how poor the coaching has been all around. They're more talented than most teams in the Big Ten, but they just don't play well enough as a team. They could have beaten Washington. They were up 17-14 going into the fourth. Mm -hmm. And the Washington just took over the game, and they had nothing left. It was Jack Tuttle's first real action this season against Washington. He was hurt to start, so he didn't really play. Mm -hmm. At this point, everybody knows he's the best option. And that also shows how the bad decision-making that Sharon and the coaching staff made in the offseason and to start the season. Because Jack Tuttle is a backup start level guy in the Big Ten. Yeah. And he's their best option at this point. Unfortunately. Yeah. 
and he was he he was all right. He ended up making a decision that turned the game, but he wasn't the big the biggest reason why they lost that game. Like Michigan's right. defense fell apart, and they they don't have enough playmakers in the receiving core to raise Jack Tuttle. Mm-hmm. So they're going into this game at Illinois. Illinois is five and one. Wait, before you move on, because I just want to talk about the Washington game. Do you think it was funny that they rushed the field? Because to me, I thought See, it was the I fact thought, the fact that they lost the national championship game. Yeah, that's what got the fans. I'm sure it was the the feeling of revenge. But for to everybody. me, it, it definitely the felt a little bit so. awkward. Th- listen, from the outside looking in, there's been some more field rushing than there probably needs to be this season. Even though I love it, like I but, get it. Yes, yeah. Michigan was top ten, but they were ranked tenth at the time. Washington was, were they four and one at the time? Yeah, going into that game, so like it wasn't necessary. They were. It was just weird. It, it wasn't necessary. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, okay, go on. Moving but, on. Illinois. Illinois is five and one. They've been pretty good this season, but they're coming off a really weird game against Purdue. Yeah. Where they were up, I believe, like thirty-four to thirteen going into the fourth quarter. They let Purdue come all the way back and take the lead at thirty-seven, thirty-four with a backup in Ryan Brown, who took the place for a Hudson card in that game. He gave Purdue more juice. Mm -hmm. He threw the ball better. He ran a lot better. And it looked like Illinois was going to lose, but they were able to charge down the field and kick a field goal with a few seconds left. And then they ended up winning 50-49 to in overtime. Purdue went for two and couldn't get the two-point conversion. So that was all over the place. I'm not sure how to feel about Illinois going into this one. They're still pretty good, but... Who knows? Brett Bielema is a better coach than Sharon Moore as it stands. Yeah. Illinois' defense got picked apart in that second half by Purdue, and Purdue isn't that great. Yeah. So if Kurt Campbell can draw up some decent stuff, Michigan can hit some nice plays on Illinois, but who knows if they can. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow, I did not. Okay, so sorry to cut you off again. I did not know that Ryan Brown is from Clarkson. I forgot about that too. Honestly, was did he didn't he move to New York or I believe so. I I don't yeah. think he played for I, Clarkson. I remember because looking at his recruiting profile when he went to Purdue, it said he was he was came yeah. from New York. So yeah, I, I didn't I'm realize he was sure. from Clarkson. But uh, yeah, that's uh, just interesting. So yeah, fun fact, Ryan Brown. From but he Clarkson. ran all over Illinois as well. Yeah. So, but he had a great game. So this is a really unpredictable game for some reason on the ESPN app. They have Michigan with almost 60% advantage on what's the, the road. What's the spread in the game? Um, It is a three-and-a-half spread for Michigan, minus hmm. three-and-a-half. Okay. Yeah. Total 44-and-a-half. And, yeah. Um, I, I, I really have no idea what to feel about this game right now because I don't trust Michigan at, to play well for an entire game. Mm-hmm. But after that, after that Illinois game against Purdue – I don't know what direction they're headed in. The fact that their defense was just so easy to take advantage of yeah, by a bad team for the most part in Purdue, even though Ryan Brown gave them some juice. Mm-hmm. Like Michigan has the players to take advantage of Illinois' defense. I just don't know what's going to happen, man. I'll, I, I'm just going to go with the hope that they can pull this out and go Michigan. But I, I don't know. Yeah, Illinois could be the better team right now. I'm just going to go Michigan. I hope they win. I don't have much hope <laughs> for them as a team. But, hmm. listen, they, they won a weird game in USC with Alex Orgy. Yeah. They they do weird things. They have really good stretches and really bad stretches. I don't know what to expect out of this. I'll just go Michigan. Do you think they're they're 100% going to stick with Jack Tuttle? I want to I want to see some Jaden Davis. I That's what I want to see. I think a lot of the fans are It's not going to happen. But I, he said he's still going to incorporate some Alex Orgy, mm-hmm. which it'll probably be at the worst times like they did with Davis Warren. Yeah. It'll be at times where Illinois knows exactly what's going to happen. Exactly. I I, I want to see at least a quarter of the kid. But I, I don't know, man. I don't want to see him at the last minute against Ohio State. Yeah. get Let him get at, a little comfortable going into next season. Yeah, like just, I, I want to see some of the kids. Just see what you got. Yeah. Hopefully they can – get a big lead on somebody just to give him some time maybe hmm. that's what i'd like to see but i it's going to be mostly jack total with sprinkles of alex orgy at worst times yeah i can see that all right 
into the picks slash NFL news because there is a lot of NFL news. So we'll talk about specific games, talk about some players specifically. There's already been some trades, which has been a lot of fun. We're still three weeks away from the trade deadline in the NFL, and we're already getting trades, which is nice to see. But if we go to the week, week seven tally of picks, because we missed last week, week five, let me actually go back real quick just to double check our numbers. So in week five, I believe you had eight correct picks. I had seven. So you closed the gap a little bit. And then last week I had, let me cross out a number, eight and you had nine. So going into week seven, we're tied again. <laughs> Have 51 picks correct. This happens every time. I know. One, we go back and forth. We were tied, and then somebody takes the yeah. ultimate lead. Yep. And then usually the last couple weeks, somebody pulls away. Um, so starting week seven, we have a very disappointing Thursday night football game. Surprisingly, we've actually had some decent Thursday night matchups the last couple weeks. But this week, we have Denver at New Orleans. And New Orleans normally would be okay but they're without Derek Carr, they're without Chris Olave, they're without Rashid Shahid, and they're without Taysom Hill. So, sure, it's fun for us to be able to watch Spencer Rattler. He played a bit um, last week. He started well. Yeah, and he looked yeah. decent. Um, but his number one wide receiver tonight is probably going to be Bub Means. I don't know who Bub Means was. I know who Bub Means From last is. year. I figured you did. <laughs> yes, sir. But last week when he came up on the scoreboard, I was like, I don't know who Bub Means is, and I meant to ask Malik about it. <laughs> um, I think they have, what is it? Oh, they have Bub Means, Mason Tipton, and Cedric Wilson. That's depressing. Yeah. He isn't Foster Moreau, their tight end. So yes, and really Juwan, they also have Jawan Johnson. Well, Jawan Johnson could do something. He's, yeah, he's not yeah. bad. Um. So, yeah, that's uh, not fun. It's rough. And then Denver, although they're 3-3, three and three, they just win really ugly games, to be honest. Yeah. Bo Nix had a good game, actually, two weeks ago, and then last week it regressed again. Yeah. he. I think last week he ran for, like, 60 yards, but, yeah, the, the, the Denver offense is just ugly, and yeah. their defense is holding it together for them. Um, I don't know if Pat Sertan is playing in this game. I, I think he missed, he missed last week or two weeks ago. Um, he's been a little bit banged up, so it, it might be a really ugly game. Denver can't even run the ball. New Orleans kind of can, but New Orleans defense has also been bad. This I don't know this why year. they can't get Javante Williams going. I don't either. I have him to on me, my fantasy To me, team. he's supposed to, like, I, I don't know. Maybe you put him somewhere else and it will work. Yeah. And now, well, Sean Payton this week has been talking about Audrey Estime, so... Hasn't he been hurt? I forgot. He was. I, I forgot he was on the. They've team. slowly yeah. been working him back, but he was. Like, he missed yeah. like the first four or five weeks, so maybe he gets more run. I don't know, but I agree with you. I feel like Javante maybe could just use a new scenery, some new scenery or something. I, I don't know. So it, it could be ugly. Maybe it'll be fun ugly, but I'm not sure if it's going to be. I think I'm going to go with Denver just because of defense. So that's who I'm taking. I'm just going to – that Denver's probably going to win, but I'll just go opposite this time and go Spencer Rattler because I like him more than Bo Nix. All right. And then, once again, in London are the Jacksonville Jaguars staying for two weeks. And this week they're the home team. How have they become this bad? I don't know. Like, players are telling the media, like, our guys are quitting. Yeah. <laughs> like – What happened to Travis uh, Etienne? I know he's been banged up a little bit the last couple what of weeks. What happened to Trevor Lawrence? What happened where? to Travis Etienne? Like, Brian Thomas, he's your only hope. He's a rookie. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Andre Sisco saying guys are quitting. <laughs> yeah. Doug Peterson may he not say, leave. He, he was the first person to say guys look like they're quitting or yeah. something. Yeah. He, he, he might not leave London. He might not get a ticket back home. He might want to stay in London. <laughs> yeah. Get a good vacation with your family. Right. Um, the only thing that's helping them out this week is they're playing New England. But the problem is New England, they started your guy last week, Drake May. Yeah, he started against one of the best defensive fronts in the league. Mm -hmm. Not much skill talent around him. He looked all right. He had three touchdowns. He had a better game than Jacoby Brissett has had 
at all this season. And that's why I said they should have started him from the get-go. And I'm taking New England. <laughs> okay. Um, they, the the Patriots can't lose to like the absolute hopeless London Jaguars. But I'm not calling them the, the, the Jacksonville Jaguars for the rest of the season. They're the London Jaguars. All right. Well, then I'm taking London. I don't know. That's just. Do you, I feel do, you, like, do you think it's possible for them to have some pride at all for the rest of this season? If if they lose this they game, hard. if they lose this game, it's over. So I think that's maybe I, it's why it's already over. But it's. Who's waking it's up for this? Hit, it's time to hit the code red. If Who's waking this. up for this game? I'm an NFL slappy, and I've been waking. I woke up for Jacksonville, Chicago last Listen, week. I don't wake up. I wake up early on the weekends just because my like mental clock is set that way. Yeah, I'm probably gonna watch some of this just because of Drake May. I'm not waking up to watch the game. Yeah, but I will watch some because of Drake May. I'll probably be awake by halftime and I'll tune in, but I'm not getting like I've been setting my alarm for 9:30. The last you're, couple weeks. you're a sick man, Joe. I am. I'm happy for you. I am. You're a sick man. And I've been doing it. And then this week, it's not going to happen. I don't want to get up and watch New England and Jacksonville in London. I don't know why they keep doing this to those fans over there. I don't know. They're just happy to see NFL football live, but yeah. you could have given them something really good once. Yeah. I, like, I don't know. Brazil got Philly and Green Bay to start the season. They got fireworks on yeah. a bad field. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A really bad field, actually. Um. All right, so now we'll we'll go into Detroit, Minnesota, so we can talk about Detroit a bit. This is for the lead in the NFC North. Lions are four and one. Minnesota's five and zero. Oh. And if the Lions win, they have the tiebreaker. They're leading the North, which right now is the best division in football. It's wild. Yeah, they just beat the Dallas Cowboys forty-seven to nine. Beating the brakes off of them. Arguably the best win in Lions franchise history. They had Dan Skipper wide as a wide out. When they when they when he came in and talked to the ref, I almost lost my mind. Yeah. <laughs> they did I just texted an all cap skipper to, to most of my friends. They had a, a small hook and ladder to, to Penesul. Penesul. They tried their hardest to get an O lineman touchdown. They did a double and they did a double end around flea flicker to Jared Goff. To throw it to Sam Laporta for a 52 yeah. yard touchdown. They just did whatever they wanted. Mm -hmm. And that was the perfect recipe for revenge from last year's game. And it was not sweeter, could not be sweeter against America's team. And now America's team is in shambles. Jerry Jones is cussing out radio hosts, threatening yeah. their jobs. He's looking rough. I hope this burns all the way down. And now the Lions are once again getting their. National television love. ESPN's been talking about him a lot. Jared Goff has had back-to-back -back really good games. Very efficient. Tim Patrick had his best game. Tim Patrick has been great for this team, yeah. I think. Having a veteran presence, just a big-bodied receiver. Um, I I love what he's been doing. I was surprised that he got cut and that nobody really picked him up. So when the Lions did, I was, I was happy about it. The only disappointment that we have to talk about is we lost Aiden Hutchinson. For the season. On a sack. On a sack. On a sack. He ran into Aleem McNeil, basically. I mean, there was other people involved, but his leg went smack dab into Aleem's leg. Perfect amount of force. Perfect placement. Broke his tibia and his fibia, or fractured, I believe. But they were supposed clean fractures. I don't believe they were compound fractures. There had been some... Odd reporting that Dan Campbell said that it was a compound, but then they said that wasn't necessarily true. Compound fracture, meaning the bone was sticking out of the skin. That makes it even more complicated of a recovery. He already had his surgery like the day after, yeah. and it sounds like everything went smoothly, but I believe it's about a six-month recovery time. Don't quote me on that. So he's done. There was some talk that if he only broke one of the bones, that there was a chance he could make it back for like a Super Bowl play. But at that point, I would rather just ha have him sit, make sure he's good yeah. for next year. He'd season. be a decoy for the most part at that yeah. point. Yeah. Because um, it's going to be a lot of rehab. It's going to be like a mental rehab of just being able to play on it again. So it's it sucks. He was up for player of the defensive player of the year. He was on an almost historic pace almost. Yeah. He was leading the league yeah. in like sacks. 20 sacks almost seemed like as the minimum. Yeah. And so now the Lions are without both of their 
uh, defensive ends that they started the season with. and They're in the market for somebody. They just don't know yet. They need to do something. Yeah. Now, a lot of people, you know, are going – going to the above and beyond guys of Max Crosby, Miles Garrett. That's the dream. That would be yeah. And selling the dream isn't always bad. It's yeah. good sometimes. That would be insane. But I think we need to maybe look yeah. You'd have a step to below, you'd have to give up your future for those guys. Which to me I'm okay with, but <laughs> a lot of people aren't around here. Which is fine. Everybody has their own opinion. But I would rather just try to get a win now. So some of the names that have been thrown out the one that I've heard the most that sounds the most doable is the Darius Smith. Yeah. So it's going to the Browns' other side of the ball, opposite Miles Garrett. Zadarius Smith has been very good. I believe he's 32 years old now, but he also gives you good pressure, a lot cheaper than Miles Garrett or Max Crosby. And the other one that I think would be really interesting, but I don't think that is going to happen unless they just tumble to the ground. I think maybe if they would have lost to the Giants, could have happened. Cincinnati's Trey Hendrickson. That would have been my guy of choice. That was, kind of, that was the backup to Crosby or yeah, yeah. Miles Garrett to me. But they ended up beating the Giants, so now the Bengals are 2-4. and four. I feel like the way that they are, they always think that they have a chance to make the playoffs, so they probably won't do it unless they have a, a big skid in these next three weeks. But even if they win or even if they lose their next three weeks, do they still say they're in the trade market? I don't know. So... Trey Hendrickson, another one that would be nice. There's some other names that are being thrown out there that are kind of a step below that even, which even I would be okay with that. But so far, they haven't really done anything just yet. They signed Isaiah Thomas off of Cincinnati's practice squad. Everybody thought it was funny because it's Isaiah Thomas, but he's a nobody basically, just a guy. Aline McNeil's extension was bigger news than that. Yeah, so Aline McNeil got a four-year extension for $97 million, 55 guaranteed, I believe. Trusted inside pass rusher. Mm -hmm. Why not? The reason that Aiden Hutchinson's like, no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) He's just about to kill all the vibes. Yeah, it's not necessarily like that. (laughs) No, it just happened. Like It was a definite accident. Unlike Patrick Mahomes, who took out Rasheed Rice's ACL. Anyway, (laughs) um, so Aline McNeil extended – Nice to see. He's been having a good season as well. So it'll be interesting to see how he does, especially this week, without Hutchinson. I'm curious, too, if they're going to bring James Houston back. I know he's had a terrible camp, had a terrible offseason after the hype from last year, but maybe this is his chance to kind of get another chance, per se. So... This game is going to be huge. Yeah, my my thought is that they're going to like mix and disguise a lot more blitzes. Yeah, since they know it's going to be hard to get consistent pressure. So right, yeah, they're going to send guys and try to disguise it as much as possible. Mm-hmm. And the thing I think too is like the Lions are still super good at stopping the run. Like yeah. Hutch isn't going to change that. I mean, he's definitely a part of it. But I think just their scheme is really good against the run. So that's going to still be fine. The problem becomes, like we said, the pressure. So guys are going to be able to have more time to get to their receivers. This week especially is going to be scary because Sam Darnold, when pressured, can make mistakes. But he's almost at full strength now where he's gotten Jordan Addison back. Justin Jefferson is there. TJ Hawkinson isn't expected to play, but I think he's starting to practice again. So I don't know. We need to figure out pressure, ways to get pressure, or like you said, get some tricky disguises to make Sam Darnold think that he's throwing safe and pick him off a couple times because he is known to make mistakes. So that's going to be a big battle because we do not want Justin Jefferson running all over this team. That's terrifying. But um, I still Are have... you both taking the Lions? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah <laughs> that's what sure. I assumed. I think if anything, like even if the defense is bad, I think the team is just going to, at least for this game, have a a morale boost of wanting to do it for Aiden. Now to be able to carry that through the rest of the season is really hard just because, you know, you're going to get into tough matchups every once in a while. And this is, I mean, this is a tough matchup this week, but I think for the week after they're going to be riding high and they're going to want to make sure they do this for Hutch and that'll be their, their mentality going into the game. Um, Next up we have Seattle at Atlanta. My favorite kind of matchup, a battle Of the birds. Battle of the birds. And uh, this could be a shootout. Drake London's playing well. Seattle is kind of not playing well at the moment. Ever since they lost the Lions, they've lost three straight, I believe. 
And uh, Gino has just been okay. The last week he could not connect with DK Metcalf. He was like three of eleven throwing to DK. Now there was like a, a touchdown that was called back, and then he had an, another touchdown that he could have had. Um, that his big toe was just stepping out of bounds. So this could be a fun fun game. Both teams kind of needing a win. Uh, Seattle probably a little bit more than Atlanta, but it's in Atlanta. So I think I'm going to stick with Atlanta. I think Seattle is going to take a couple more <clears throat> weeks to get going. I'm also going to go Atlanta. I think they're figuring out what their offensive formula is, even though they still can't get B. John Robinson going. Yeah. He had a good game last week. He had 95 yards yeah. and two touchdowns. But, yeah, he's really struggled. Yeah, Kirk Cousins and that receiving core, they're finding some chemistry. We never talked about Kirk Cousins throwing for 500, 500 yards two Listen, weeks ago. I, I almost forgot. It, that was incredible. Yeah. Prime time, Kirk. I can't remember the last time that I saw somebody throw for 500 yards. It's been a while. Like, I feel like it was Peyton Manning Broncos. I think Ben Roethlisberger got close. I can't remember if yeah. he got over. but yeah, It's crazy. Uh, Tennessee at Buffalo. Buffalo. They got their number one wide receiver. Amari Cooper. I love it. Cleveland. I love it. Um, they had to do something. Yeah, I, I think so too. But you're not you're not taking the Titans, are you? There's part of me that wants to, but I think Listen Buffalo. Listen to that side. Take Will Levis. I, Go yeah, to the dark I side. I know. <laughs> Go to the dark side. The, the only thing that I can see is Tennessee's defense is pretty good. Tony Pollard's played good for them. Buffalo's run defense is not as good. But when you get to the end of the day, it's Will Levis or Mason Rudolph. You know who would help Tennessee right now? Ryan Tannehill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'd help a couple Just bring teams. him back. He'd help a couple teams. Just bring him right back. Yeah, I'm going Buffalo. Unfortunate. Uh, Cincinnati at Cleveland. I'm going Cincinnati. You sure you don't want to take Deshaun Watson? What if, Without if they, Amari if Cooper? If they play Jameis, there's a chance they could win. But listen, the corpse of Deshaun Watson is just out there hanging. What if Amari Cooper was the problem? <laughs> Jerry Judy puts Sorry. up like 10 catches, 200 yards. Yeah. I don't know. At Cleveland, just give us Miles Garrett. Come on. Let's do it. Um, Houston at Green Bay. This could be a good matchup. I'm going to go Green Bay. Houston is missing Nico Collins. But they did get Joe Mixon back. I'm going to go with Houston just because I need to see the NFC North fall off a little bit. Even though it's good for the Lions if they keep winning and the NFC North looks good, makes the Lions look better. But I think I think Houston is kind of hitting their stride a little bit now. Uh, Miami at Indianapolis. I believe Anthony Richardson is actually starting, but I thought he was starting last week and Joe Flacco started, so not sure. Tyler Huntley. Maybe he got better off of their bye week. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Let's go with... Screw it. I'm taking Miami again. I'm taking Indianapolis. I know. <laughs> I was just waiting to see who you picked. I figured. Um, I don't know why I'm taking the away teams, but... Oh, well, it's fine. Uh, Vegas at the Raiders. Or at the Rams. <laughs> <laughs> Las Vegas Raiders at the Rams. This is an ugly game. I don't want to watch this game. Las Vegas Listen. just gave up Devontae Adams. You know what? You know why I'm going to take make this pick? Okay. Because Tom Brady is now a 5% oh my gosh. owner. You believe franchise. in Aiden O'Connell that much? I'm going to go with the Raiders. <laughs> All right. Well, then, thank you for that because I'll take the Rams. Nice. I, I mean, I don't have much to believe in about the Rams, though, either. Like, their defense is terrible. Kyron Williams is, like, this is the a only. Fest. Yeah, this I'm not watching this game. Fest. Uh, not a smooth snooth. Wow. Just had a problem there. Vegas Raiders snooth fest. <laughs> um, Carolina at Washington should not be a snooze fest. Could be fun. I both hope defenses, Daniels rips them apart. Both defense is not very good. Um, but the offenses are okay. I'm going Washington. Okay. Me too. Yeah. Jaden Daniels is my guy, but I hope it's competitive because I, I think it would be, it would be fun at least. I like when I I like seeing Andy Dalton still sling it around. I think it's fun. Chuba Hubbard's playing pretty good too, even though they're supposed to be getting Jonathan Brooks back soon. But most people's game of the week, which I think will be game of the week, I'm I'm pretty sure. So we'll get to hear Tom Brady on the call, Kansas City at San Francisco. You excited about this game or not? No. Okay. I'm not. I'm not really either. 
I think it might be kind of boring. Both teams have kind of like they're winning games, but like especially Kansas City, they're another ugly win kind of team, and they just get it done. Washington it's, Kansas City is not fun. No, no, <laughs> it's not. They're just not as. But they're somehow still winning. <laughs> they're not as fun as they used. It's to stupid. Be. Yeah, it's 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 really dumb. Yeah, and then San Francisco. You would think they would be fun. They've had injuries. They're like they got guys coming in and out. Jordan Brock, Mason has been really good. Brock Purdy's been spreading the ball around so much that it's like we don't get to see big highlight plays too often from like Ayuk or Debo. We're getting a lot of touchdowns to George Kittle, which you know George Kittle is good and he's fun, but he's also kind of boring the way that he plays. So yeah, I, I think this game could end up being kind of boring. I'm going San Francisco. Okay, Kansas City can't keep getting away with this, <laughs> can they? Man, I'm gonna there's, go. There's with, no way they can. I'm going with Kansas City then. Ugh, you Taylor Swift fan again? I'm taking the away team, so <laughs> I don't know. Here's another news mess. I can't talk. I'm gonna not say it anymore. <laughs> We're going to sleep early on Sunday night because I don't want to watch the Jets and the Steelers. Uh, Russell Wilson might start. Aaron though- Rodgers versus Russell Wilson in 2024. Who's excited? Raise your hand. The only That's reason a, to be slightly excited Devontae's about the, back. Exactly. Like, sure, Devontae Adams is with yeah. the Jets now. They're two and four. That'll that'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sure, their offense is gonna be okay, but their defense hasn't been nearly as good as they were. They can't get Brees Hall going. He's he one of the better running game. backs in the league and they can't get him going. He had a good game last week, but who did they play last week? It was a bad defense, right? They lost to the Bills. Yeah, and Buffalo's yeah. defense has been getting run over by running backs. Yeah. So this week they play a good defense in the Steelers, but the Steelers can't move the ball. So this is going to be a boring, like defensive matchup. Even though it's not defense, I don't know Pittsburgh. It's just give me the Steelers. Oh man, I'm gonna take the Jets. I hate the fact that Jets fans keep suffering, but I don't want the Aaron Rodgers experiment to <laughs> be yeah. some magic ride. I just think the Jets do have that chance of being overly excited with Devontae Adams. So maybe it's like possible. they have one good breakout game. And then they go back to nothing burgers. Um, we're back to double Monday night games. I don't know why. No, I'm not. I'm not a fan. I'm not sure. I'm not a fan of a lot of just NFL yeah. things. I'm just, yeah. Because especially because this first Monday night game would have been great by itself. Baltimore and Tampa Bay. We got the Ravens taking on the Bucks. Baker Mayfield having a That's pretty good great season once yeah. again. Chris Godwin like has been back. Tampa Bay's got a weird running back room with Rashad White maybe being Sean healthy. Tucker. Bucky Irving. Syracuse is fine as Sean Tucker, my guy. <laughs> Breaking out. <laughs> yeah. Love it. And then Baltimore's just been Baltimore with exactly how we expected Lamar Jackson King, and Derrick Henry to be. Seeing Derrick Henry this good is, is amazing. Yeah. He's, he's still the best. He looks hardly any different than he did yeah. multiple years ago. Um. I'm going to go with Baltimore just because I think they're the better team. Is it in Tampa? It is in Tampa. I'm going to go with the Bucs. So, once again, I'm going with the away teams. Baltimore has a few bad games every season. They do. And I'm just going to assume this is one of them. Okay. Yeah. I just think. The last time I remember, remember that duel between Baker and Lamar in Cleveland when they both balled out and the Ravens won at the last minute. Okay. That was like 20. Was that 2020? Probably. That was three or four years ago. It It was a really good game. Yeah, Baltimore won at the last minute. I'm going to go with Baker. This, this could set up the same way because, you know, Baltimore, they're they're another one of those teams with really good run up, run defense. Passing off defense has not been that good. Tampa Bay likes to throw the ball a lot. They they don't run as much. So it could be a shootout. Say Flowers has actually looked really good for Baltimore the last couple of weeks. Tampa Bay's defense also isn't, you know, as good as they've been in the past. So, yeah, could be a fun game. I, I think it's a fun Monday night game. And there is no reason that I will be watching the final game of the week, Chargers at the Cardinals. Why? This is a 9 o'clock start time for us Eastern Coast folks. Chargers at the Cardinals. Cardinals without Marvin Harrison Jr. Chargers in their boring Jim Harbaugh offense. Chargers. I agree with you. <laughs> Chargers. Shout out to Justin Herbert for 
just staying alive. Being in the system. Just staying alive. I yeah. feel, I mean, I don't feel bad necessarily, but I, I like Justin Herbert a lot. I hate that he's in this offense. It's rough. It's just, it's, really rough. it's not built for him. I get also that they don't have a ton of weapons. Josh Palmer, Quentin Johnson. Lad McConkey's been okay uh, developing, but yeah. And then Arizona without Marvin Harrison Jr. is just, ugh. And they haven't played very good either most of the season. So, I don't know. I don't want to watch this game. I don't think I'm going to stay up until midnight don't. to watch yeah. this. To watch the end of this game. All right. That's our week seven picks. We got a little bit of time. We can talk about those Pistons. We can just preview it Listen. a little. Because we're trying to set it up for next week. There's a ch- I'm, I'm going to just give some there's a chances. Okay. There's a chance Fred Vincent has improved Jaden Ivey's jumper drastically. I hope so. There's a chance Cade Cunningham could be an all-star finally and put up some numbers. There's a chance Tobias Harris could average like 19 a game and just be steady for the entire season. Yeah. There's a chance Malik Beasley could shoot like over 40% from three. There's a chance Tim Hardaway could not be a skeleton and be a really good three-point shooter also. There's a chance the Detroit Pistons are a competent professional basketball team. Mm Mm-hmm. But we can agree there's not a chance of them making the playoffs. Most likely. <laughs> but 30 wins is possible. I'm still not there yet, but... It I, could be far-fetched. I do like what we've seen out of Jay Ivey in the preseason so far. He's been shooting really well. They, they, JB Biggerstaff has empowered him. Yeah. Can you imagine what happens <laughs> when you empower a young, talented yeah. guard mm-hmm. with, maybe some, with some talent? Maybe it's the new dress code. Hey, man. Do you see that? No headbands, no jewelry, something like that. Are you serious? Yeah. Is this 2002 again? I don't know. What do you mean? That's what J.B. Bickerstaff has said. He's got like a dress code going. Oh, what? Oh, that's his dress code? Yeah. Oh, I'm. I'm, Let's do it. I love it. (laughs) So I don't know. Let's be. We're listen. We're not children anymore. We're we're big boys. the, The only problem that I have in the funny things that you know people have posted, they post a lot of pictures of, you know. Back in 2004, Rip Hamilton wore a headband. Rashid wore a headband. Ben Wallace wore a headband. I mean, I, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I don't either. But nobody did. Anybody even wear a headband last year? I don't even think anybody uh, did. I'm sure somebody did. <laughs> like none of the young guys wore headbands. Yeah, I, I don't know. I have no recollection. The other thing that I was going to mention too about with basketball season coming up, did you happen to see ESPN's top 100 players? I don't pay attention to it because it's it's rage bait. Every I believe year, but. Cade Cunningham was <laughs> ranked like sixty fourth, and I want to say he was ranked behind. Um, there's a player specific. Malik Monk. It made a lot of people. I'm not, I'm not mad at that. You think Malik Monk is better than Cade Cunningham right it, now? It's because of situation and what's happening. I but guess Malik Monk helped get the Sacramento back to the playoffs. That's huge. I just feel like his sample size is, is Cade a lot Cunningham smaller. a better player. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's the best players. But I, I'm not letting it stress me out. The, every top 100 list to start every season is nonsense. I just think it's weird. I don't. It's always weird. <laughs> it's, just, it's just weird. It's, it's nonsense. They always have nonsense. Yeah. It's stupid. So, anyway. Cade will be better than the 64th best player in the league. Yeah. I'm just hoping for improvement out of the Pistons. And uh, hopefully, like you said, show some signs of competence. Whether we will get that or not, there there will be no more crazy losing streaks. I can guarantee that. I don't know if I can guarantee that just yet. Maybe not no the, to the extent streaks. that we saw, but could they lose six or seven in a row? Yeah, yeah. We're not hitting the twenties. <laughs> no, I don't happening. think so either. That's but. crazy losing streaks. Okay, I don't think they hit like fifteen or anything like that. I don't know. I start to think ten is a crazy losing streak, but. Anyway, last year was an all timer. But we'll yeah. try to hopefully get Chris. Like I said, we're hoping to get Chris on next week. Get his opinions because he's he's the piston slappy. He can give us some more front office advice, maybe. Um, and we'll go from there. We'll try to do a big blowout show about the Pistons since it will be their season opener against Cleveland. And yeah, we'll actually talk about them. We've ignored them for over a year. 
I guess we can talk about them. Listen, I, if the Pistons release Wendell Moore, I'll be an even bigger fan. <laughs> You're of back them. in. That's all yes. it takes. Wendell Moore has been like one of my basketball nemeses for a long time. Maybe you could write a strongly worded letter <laughs> and see if they'll respond. Get him the out of Detroit. <laughs> yeah. Get rid of Wendell Moore or you've lost a fan. <laughs> or you've lost me. <laughs> anyway, we'll get back to you guys hopefully next week. Again, if we can't get Chris on, maybe it'll be two weeks from now. Um, but, yeah, hopefully the Lions will be the leader in the NFC North next time that we come on. But for now, this has been Views from the Sidelines, and we'll see you next time. Shouts out to Lonzo Ball. He came back after two years and